Hey guys, in today's video, we're discussing the age old debate about bands using laptops or backing tracks live. So recently, or at least somewhat recently, I'm a little late to the party, but the singer from Falling Reverse made a Instagram video explaining why they had to cancel a show because they lost their laptops or the laptops got stolen or something like that. And it just turned into a big debate with Sebastian Bach from Skid Row and a couple of other people, you know, that started giving him crap about it, which is kind of silly. They're such different bands. But my YouTube channel actually started, the first video series that I did was seven videos about how to use backing tracks and a laptop live and how to program, you know, MIDI and lights and a video show with it, along with backing tracks and a click track and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm definitely very pro backing track. So in this video, I'm going to explain why I am pro backing tracks and pro laptops live. But I'm also going to kind of just briefly just discuss kind of just how silly this debate really is. However long this video is, I can sum this up in about 20 seconds. Depends on the band and it depends on the musicians. Some bands it works, other bands it doesn't. Some musicians want to do it, some musicians don't. Congratulations, you can click off the video now. Some guitar players like to use amps, other ones like to use amp modelers. Some bands have like a stage attire, the other ones say it doesn't matter, wear whatever you want. It really just depends on your band. I'm not here to tell you how to do music, to what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy, it's really up to you. It's just silly that there's such a debate. There's so many different styles of music out there. It'll work for some and not work for others. However, I'm gonna give you my reasons for why I like laptops and why I like backing tracks and click tracks live. Point of this video is just to give you my side of it. If you listen to it and you think I make good points and you want to start using the laptops, you can get started on that journey. I've done a ton of videos on this channel explaining the steps on how to do that, which I'll link down in the description. If you watch this video and you're like, eh, doesn't, eh, I'm not sold, then don't do it. It's up to you to make the decision if it makes sense to you for you to use them or not. I'm sure there are some people who have clicked on this video just to hate the video. Fine. I mean, that's the way musicians are. I mean, we're pretty opinionated if you're, if we're being honest about it. I don't care what you do. I personally have decided that my projects benefit from backing tracks and laptops. Be sure to subscribe because I post videos like this all the time. And also check out some of the videos down in the description down below if you are interested in how to do this. So before I give my opinions on why I am pro laptop and backing tracks, I want to get two things out of the way first. First of all, it depends on the band. This argument between Sebastian Bach and Ronnie from Falling Reverse, I think his name's Ronnie. I honestly don't listen to either band, uh, but I'm familiar with the music. I mean, listen to both of those bands. Skid Row can be guitars, bass, drums, and vocals. And their show is going to sound fine with that. Listen to Falling in Reverse. There's all sorts of synths and productions and 808s and electronic elements and stuff like that. You're not going to be able to do that live without some sort of laptop or backing tracks or something like that. There's so many different styles of music. It really just depends on the band. Some bands will sound better with them. Some I think honestly wouldn't sound as good with them. My original music, actually, if I lost my laptop, like what happened with Falling in Reverse, I would be pretty devastated. It's a one man band, I'm a live looper, and there's characters and a dialogue and a story that go with it. So obviously there's backing tracks that have, you know, the characters saying their lines during this song. Um, and there's the light show and the visuals and stuff like that that sync together. For me, it would be pretty devastating to lose my laptop. But like, listen to the Foo Fighters. I wouldn't want to see the Foo Fighters perform to backing tracks. There's something about them being raw and performing performing and, you know, feeling the tempos go up and down, not being to a click track. I don't think they're to a click track. That's part of the fun of the Foo Fighters. I couldn't imagine them playing to backing tracks. I think they would suffer from that. I mean, there's so many different styles, so many musicians, different working musicians. It, it, there's just so many different options. But I will say this, though. Modern music does seem to rely more on tracks and production and elements and stuff like that. This does not matter what your opinion is. If you only like classic rock, you don't, you hate all the new stuff, that's fine. I, I'm not here to convince you otherwise. But you have to admit that the style has changed and there's a lot of production that comes with modern rock. There's three bands I can think of, Fall Out Boy, In This Moment, or Papa Roach. Those are kind of just bands I kind of just thought of while putting this video together. Listen to their older stuff. It is very much just guitar, bass, drums, and vocals. Maybe a couple electronic elements. And they were around, you know, in the early 2000s, late 90s. Listen to them now. There's all sorts of production going on in their in their music. There's a ton of different productions. That's kind of the, the way that the style has changed. Again, your opinion of that doesn't matter. You're going to need some sort of backing track or something in order to get those sounds. If you have an original band that sounds like 
Iron Maiden or something like that. Yeah, you probably don't need a backing track live. It's just very narrow-minded not to really realize that there's multiple styles of music out there. I mean, think of a wedding band versus the Foo Fighters performing live. Think of a band doing a tribute to Led Zeppelin versus a band doing a tribute to 21 Pilots. Think of an original band that's something that's a little more electronic oriented versus something that sounds, you know, like original band that sounds more classic rock sounding. Band performing in an orchestra versus like a cruise ship music or a musician performing at resorts. If you're in a band that doesn't need this production synth element, it makes sense why you are kind of turned off by laptops. Either way, if the show suffers without them, I think it's definitely makes a sense to use it. If you don't need it, like a jazz band or a metal band that just uses guitar, bass, drums, and vocals, or, you know, a funk band or something like that that has a horn section and everything like that, I mean, you can get away with that. There's just so many different styles of music. The second point that I want to make is that everyone is going to have a threshold of what they think too much backing tracks is. Some people will say absolutely no backing tracks and that's, that is what it is. But everyone's gonna have a threshold of what too much laptop or too much backing track is. I think if you're lip syncing lead vocals or lead guitar solos and stuff like that, or even just like not playing the instrument live, but I think most of us can agree that lip syncing or lead solos and stuff on backing tracks or truly not playing your instrument is for the most part not okay. And that's not what this video is about. If a band is doing everything in the tracks and just completely miming, that's a completely different thing. Don't be the guy in the comments saying, bro, lip syncing and you know not playing your instrument live is, is it's like, that's not at all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using backing tracks to enhance the show. Everyone's still playing their instruments, but, you know, doing stuff to enhance the show, lights, synths, 808 drops, stuff like that. I wanted to get those two things out of the way. Now let me give you my pros for why I like using laptops and backing tracks live. Okay, point number one is playing to a backing track, more specifically a click track, because you do have to play to a click track in order to play live with backing tracks. One of the pros is that it makes you sound tighter as a band. I watched video footage of like my old band before we started using a click track, and you could tell, you know, we're, we're fluctuating, you know, when it, where it drops like just a guitar, and we all come back in. It's not as tight as when we started playing to a click track. I like having a click in my ear so it doesn't have to be a drummer counting us in and then holding the tempo on a hi-hat. That kind of ruins the dynamic dynamics for me. So I like having a click track so I can start a song on guitar if that's how it, the song needs to be. I have another friend I've played with him and uh, he joined another band and they don't use a click and I asked how that's going. He's like, he's like, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of nice. He's like, I kind of wish that we did because we'll argue about tempos, which is another thing. If you don't play to a click track, it's like, oh, you played that too fast. Oh, you pl played that too slow. If it's like, okay, it's always going to be 100 beats per minute, then there's no arguing. So that's, that is one of the pluses. I do think it makes you sound tighter as a band. So the second point, people think that laptops are just backing tracks. You can also do a light show and visuals and all sorts of other stuff to make your show a lot better. It's not just about backing tracks. Again, part of my video series was about that. So if you are interested in how to do that, I have a beginner's guide on how to program lights and you know how to do it to into a computer so that everything syncs up as well as visuals and stuff like that. Like I said, I do that live with my original project. Links will be down below if you want to find out how to do that. But you know, that is a way to make the performance better as well. I remember one time, you know, I programmed a light show for my friend's band. They hired me to do that. And I brought the stuff to rehearsal just to make sure that it worked. After their first song, you know, the singer was like, this, like, is getting me pumped up, you know, more is that there's a pretty heavy metal band, he had a lot more energy. And he's like, it, it, there's something about like, you know, the lights flashing to, you know, to the music and stuff like that, it, it, it gives you more energy, and therefore it helped the performance out anything that helps the performance out, I think is definitely a good thing. A light show going with it, it visually is interesting, lights and visuals and stuff like that can enhance the show and a laptop is a way to do that. Okay, next point, uh, I guess this one could have kind of tied into number two, but I'm going to leave it separately. I use a laptop to send MIDI messages to my pedals to change my patches for me. I know this is very common for other musicians as well, especially like falling in reverse and stuff like that. I'm sure they do this too. I don't have to pedal dance anymore. When it needs to go to the chorus, my computer sends a MIDI message to my pedal to go to the chorus. When it needs to go to the solo, it turns on a boost and reverb and delay or whatever. I don't have to pedal dance anymore. That helps the performance because then I can go to the front of the stage and, you know, play guitar and I don't have to run over to my pedal board, hit my boost and then run back. I mean, now I use something called a GTRS, which has a super knob button. All the effects are built into the guitar so I can actually change patches on my guitar. I did a video on it. If you want to check it out, that's, that's an awesome guitar. So when I do play in a band that doesn't use MIDI, I have that option, but my original stuff, it does 
it changes per every song has a different patch and stuff like that and i can change it. i don't have the pedal dance anymore and that helps with the performance if you are interested in how to do that i have a bunch of videos on how to do that so check the link down below and then you can focus on the performance and again if it enhances the performance i'm pro laptop and backing tracks and i'm just, it's just obvious it makes you sound more full it does i know when my band you know we, we used to we said we wouldn't use backing tracks for a long time so it just didn't feel like it would be right for the band it really didn't and recently it started to it, it made things sound a little bit more fuller and you could see the crowd reacted to that too not that we ever really had like a bad reaction but people just responded a little bit more when it was a bigger type sound and people did seem to respond to that so it really does give you that fuller sound depending on the band again but it is definitely a plus to sound a little bit bigger okay another reason and this will be a little controversial, I think, but um, budget, the budget of the places that you're performing, you can either hire a nine piece band to perform everything, have everything authentic with the strings and the horns and the keyboards and stuff like that. Or you'd have to think about budget and how much musicians are getting paid and you can do it as a four piece. This is controversial and I can see why because it's like, well, why would that why would we have a live guitar player then, you know, and my job could be compromised. So I get it. I do. I really do get it. But at the same time, the example that I have is that I have a duo, just me and my wife, we can perform just acoustic, if we want to just do acoustic guitars and vocals, that is an option. But we can either perform as a two piece, a three piece or a four piece. When we perform as a four piece, we have a drummer and a bass player and then all the keys and strings strings and horns and stuff are in the backing tracks. We can perform as a three piece with a drummer and the bass is included in the backing tracks. And we can perform as a two piece where everything except for the guitar and the vocals are in the backing tracks. Some of you might be upset about that. I get it. I prefer to play with a live band. 100% I'll take a live band with us every time. The people that we hire are awesome. It's definitely worth it. However, part of the thing is budget. On Fridays and Saturdays, you, most places that we, you know, look at will hire a band. What about, you know, like patio gigs on a Sunday afternoon? Those are pretty popular. But, you know, most of the time when you play that, they have a small budget for it. And another thing is they have a smaller stage space as well. So they're like, hey, go play in that corner. We couldn't play with even with a four piece band in that kind of a setup. As a full time musician, I, I do have to think about budget. I can't be doing $50 gigs. I, I just can't. If you're more of a weekend warrior, you have a main job and it's a hobby and you enjoy doing that. Sure. You know, perform as a, as a six or seven piece band, you know, and everyone gets 50 bucks at the end of the night. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, I know that's going to be a little controversial, but I am being honest. It's up to you to decide if it is worth it. I'm very fortunate to be able to do this full time, but I do have to think about that as far as budget, as well as realize the fact that, hey, guitar can be replaced next. So it's up to you to make that decision. Another reason that I'm pro laptop backing tracks is with a click track, you don't just hear a click track, you can actually add cues into your ears. So you know, the way that I have it is I have, you know, like all the small things in on the end of three, one, two, three, da -da. everyone knows when to come in. And then it says stop on one, three, four, stop. Stuff like that is really helpful for two specific reasons. I mean, if you just, if you have an original band and you have, you know, just 30 minutes of material and you always use the same musician, it's not really that necessary to do that. But if you're doing, you know, cover sets, I often play four hour sets. You know, one of my bands knows like 200 songs. Another one of my bands, we looked through like our Dropbox and we had like 400 songs in there. It's ridiculous how many songs we know. When you have that much material, sometimes you go, oh, is the chorus twice? on this one. When does it end? Do we play it four times at the end and then it ends? Oh, there's two tags at the end of this chorus. Little things like that definitely help to keep the band together, especially with ending a song because so many songs just go on forever. Finally almost done with the song. And on the end of two, one, two, and. Things like that are helpful to make the show just flow smoother. You could either rehearse a bunch in order to do that, or you can save time and just have these cues and not have to rehearse as much, which is a plus. I definitely rely on those cues a lot more, and I don't need to rehearse as much. Those cues can definitely be very helpful as well. All right, so point three, I'm sure was controversial. Let's really ruffle some feathers with this one. I don't mean this as an insult. I mean this just to be honest and have the discussion about this. Some musicians cannot play to a click track, and therefore they say they're anti backing tracks because they know they have to play to a click track in order to achieve that. Or there's a lack of knowledge on how to do backing tracks. Oh, those comments are going to be spicy, I'm sure. Now, there is nothing wrong with having shortcomings as a musician. I'm not a shredder as a guitar player, and I'm also not a very good singer. I admit 
to those. And I'm not going to say, oh, I, I hate shredding because, but when in reality, I can't do it. If you can't do something, there's nothing wrong with admitting to it. I think this is part of the reason why some people are anti-laptop and backing tracks. Is they're just not very computer savvy, which I would agree is a reason to not use it. So I would say you should admit to yourself, I'm not a computer guy. Therefore, I'm just going to not use backing track live. That's fair. But saying I hate bands that play with backing tracks because you don't understand computers, I think is, uh, is, is a little silly. So I don't even know if you can really count this as a point maybe for why I like using backing tracks. Uh, it's more of like a counter argument to the anti-laptop, anti-backing track crowd. Some people can't play to a click track and therefore they don't like backing tracks, but they won't admit it to themselves. And most of the time, the argument is that it ruins the feel, which again is true in certain cases if you're not just saying that as a crutch. I'm not saying that it ruins the feel isn't a, le a legitimate case, but some people just can't play to a click and that is their excuse. I don't know if anyone will actually ever admit that, but I, I am being honest. I've seen it happen multiple times. I'm sure some people will be upset about it, but I'm just being honest. All right, point number six, dealing with band members. You know, in all honesty, sometimes you're just, you have a group of musicians that you work really well with and adding new musicians to that will take away from the dynamics of it. Sometimes you're in a band situation and it's a huge relief to lose a certain band member and you struggle, you know, finding a replacement for them. As someone who has been in bands that had, uh, had a lot of trouble with different musicians and then someone who is now, you know, in bands who I love the musicians I play with and there's such, there's such a great dynamic of people that we play with. To me, the one that there's two examples that I can think of. Periphery, you know, periphery, you know, I love periphery, but, and, but, but let's be honest, I think most people who like periphery are musicians themselves, you know, not all of them, but a good chunk of musicians are periphery fans as well. Their bass player said that they didn't want to tour anymore. He said, you know, he's going to still record and produce and stuff like that and track in the studio, but he didn't want to tour anymore. So what they decided to do is they just put the bass in the backing tracks because they didn't want to hire someone. They didn't want to change that dynamic feel. I mean, I'll let them answer that, look up their reasoning for that. To me, that made a lot of sense. It's like, well, we, you know, we, didn't want to hire someone new. We didn't want to change the band dynamics. The rest of us all work together really well. We're just going to put on the backing tracks. And they said they might change that uh, opinion in the future. But for now, they're going to do that. I think that's a completely fair reason to use backing tracks and putting the bass in the backing tracks for that reason. Another story that I can think of is that I had a friend who just kept cycling through bass players. They had so many different bass players. They did one show where it's a ballad and like where the bass and the guitars basically just hold out, you know, long chords, whole note chords. The last bass player that this guy worked with, he played a half step off on each of those notes, literally a half step off. I can't imagine how awful that sounded. Half step off the whole time and then blamed his amp on why he was off. And, and he said, I'm done. I'm just done looking for bass players. Bass is going in the backing tracks. I can see that too. You just, there is, there's a level of getting fed up with musicians. I'm sure we've all been there. There's a level of, uh, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. The three of us work together really well. well. Let's just put the bass in the track or let's not hire a keyboard player anymore. Let's put the keyboards in the tracks. I think that's a completely fair reason to be using backing tracks. It's another option, just something to think about. It's really up to you to make that decision. So those are my main reasons for it. I mean, it's up to you to really go, oh yeah, it's worth it or it's not worth it. Uh, did the pros outweigh the cons? It's really up to you to decide that. In my opinion, it does. Therefore, I decide to use them. I will give you what can be annoying with it. Firmware updates. Good God, I hate having to do firmware update stuff. I will give you that for the analog guys. You never have to update your Mesa Boogie amp, <laughs> you know. So I'll give you that. That is definitely a win. But because of that, I'm just going to give you some tips for if you use computers or laptops or backing tracks. Is that one, I, with my laptop that I use for performing, once it is programmed, I don't update. I do not update unless if I have like two months until my next show. Because when you have to update, you know, from Ableton 9 to Ableton 10, that means you have to update the iOS, the operating system on your on your Mac. Then because of that, your synth plugins don't work anymore. And just anyone who's done that has a nightmare with that, which again is probably the biggest negative about using tracks. Again, the pros outweigh the cons in my opinion, but yeah, firmware updates are the worst. So to me, I once it's ready and it's done, I don't update anything. I don't connect it to the internet. And if you do have to do a firmware update, it's not, you know, an hour before sound check. Do not do that. Second tip, 
always have a backup somewhere. That's why I'm surprised with the following reverse thing that they had no backups anywhere, like not even like saved to a cloud that you could download. Always have a backup, always have some sort of backup, even if it's just an iPad that has the backing tracks to it. And you know, the light show doesn't work or whatever, but you can still perform to the backing tracks with the click track. Always have a backup. I have two backups in every single band that I have that uses backing tracks or a laptop. Always have a backup. And the last thing I'm going to say is that treat it, treat your rig, your laptop in your in your monitor setup, anything like that as another member of the band, you do have to know how to use it. If something goes wrong with it, you do have to know how to fix it. Always test out your gear multiple times. I know I'm more of a logic guy, but I use Ableton Live. And I definitely had to go through and be like, Okay, I need to understand how this works in case if something goes wrong. So definitely treat it like another band member and definitely get to know it. But of course, always have a backup. So that's basically it. I mean, those are my opinions on why I like using a laptop and backing tracks live. Feel free to leave a comment down below uh, on your reasons if you're pro or against it, or if this video kind of helped you out and go, oh, uh, this made me want to use it or made me go, nah, I don't really need to use it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Um, if you are going to be the guy, you know, who's just going to be Oh, it's not how Skinner did it. I'm not really interested in talking to you, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but it, but I'm always willing to hear like how other musicians are doing stuff. So what works for you doesn't work for me. What works for me might not work for you. That's just the way that it is. And that's what's cool about music is that all of us can do things differently. But please feel free to leave a comment down below and add to the conversation for this. Again, don't forget to check out some of my videos explaining how to do MIDI light shows, backing tracks and stuff like that. All those are going to be linked down below. Um, so check those out if you are interested in using any of these techniques live. So that's basically it. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, just hit the thumbs up button. It does a ton to help out the YouTube algorithm. Uh, I would appreciate it. Don't forget to check out some of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Yule Music on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, mostly on Instagram. Instagram. That seems to be my favorite one. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below telling me what I left out. And I'll see you guys next time.